Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from interest.co.nz and welcome to another in our series of double shot interviews where we bring in a couple of cups of coffee and someone interesting to talk about something interesting and of course exchange rates, what's happening on global markets doesn't get more interesting than that and here's our weekly currencies report, never a dull moment we call it with Dan Bell from HiFX. Welcome in Dan, good to see you. Yeah, you too Bernard. And it has not been a dull moment at all this week with the Greek shenanigans. Uh, how has this affected markets? Yeah, so Greece is back in back in focus. <clears throat> so last week we had the uh, the big EU bailout, and everyone thought, "Hey, it's uh, everything sorted." Uh, equity markets rallied. The New Zealand dollar went up to eighty two and a half, and uh, we thought everything was going to be sorted. Um, but this week we had the uh, the Greek Prime Minister come out and say that he was uh, calling a referendum on the uh, conditions of the EU bailout. What a what a shock! I mean, give give us a feel of how markets took that. Very, very surprised. Yeah, very, very surprised. I mean, and, and it was reflected in the in, in the overall tone, which was extremely negative. We saw risk aversion grip the markets, equity markets, commodities and currencies all under significant pressure. And I suppose that the feeling is that um, you know the Greeks are, you know have have received the uh, the conditions of the bailout on the basis that they've got uh, these austerity measures to to put in place, cost cutting across their economy. And then they turn around and say, oh, hang on a minute, I'll just check with the people and see if it's OK for us to, to go ahead with it. So the um, the French um, president and, and Angela Merkel, the, the German chancellor, turned around and said, this is tantamount to basically um, telling us that you don't want to be a part of the EU. So on a political level, it was absolute suicide. And um, the ructions that have happened since then, since then have been equally extraordinary, <laughs> with the, the Greek Prime Minister going back home and saying, uh, you know that referendum I said I was going to do, and we better not do it this time. And he's got a confidence vote tonight, which everyone will be watching. He does, yeah. He's he's going to uh, going to his parliament to get a confidence vote. There's all sorts of rumours that he's been trying to get some support, and if he gets the support for the confidence vote, then he's going to step down as PM. Uh, that was actually denied by his uh, by his office, but. I think um, the political uh, ructions in the, in, the, in the Greek parliament uh, are going to continue to be a big issue. Um, whether or not he gets through this confidence vote tonight, and then obviously whether or not they can continue to have, you know, to have a government that, that, that can um, you know, a, agree to the terms of the bailout and communicate effectively with the rest of the EU is, uh, is, is a big question mark. Now, the markets actually rallied on Friday morning uh, when you might have thought, boy, they'd be a bit careful about this. What's going on here? Because there's still enormous uncertainty in Europe. Why, yeah. are they, why do we see the US stocks rise and uh, some people put a bit more risk back on the table? It is, it, is, it is a strange thing, isn't it, the way the markets can behave at times. And I think you know, we, we had uh, the market sort of anticipating this worst-case scenario around this Greek referendum, which was originally scheduled for the 3rd third or 4th of December. Um, the expectation was that if, if that was going to go through, then basically the, the Greece, Greek, Greece was going to default um, overnight. He, 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 he pulled the referendum, and everyone's had a little bit of a sigh of relief, and we've seen a bit of a technical uh, rally in, in, in most global markets overnight. But is there really much real money behind these moves? Well, you, you, you know, certainly I, I asked myself that question this morning as well because I was surprised at how quickly everything had sort of bounced back. The New Zealand dollar was trading around 78 cents yesterday afternoon. It managed to bounce, uh, bounce back over 79.5 and, and is sitting around that same level today. Equity market's up over 1.5%. So, um, you know, you, you've got to question how much, how much liquidity there is in the market, whether it's actually the smart money that's playing in the market. In a thin, a liquid market, you tend to see more um, violent, sort of volatile swings, and I think that's quite characteristic of of the market at the moment. It tends to have these these big two percent swings on a daily basis on the back of nothing, because fundamentally, um, you know, the situation in Greece continues to be very, very fragile. And some say the smart money is in the bond markets. Watching the bond markets in Europe, uh, the real action has been in that Italian bond deal. Talk about how that's affecting the process and how people view it. Yeah, so the way the market looks at the uh, Italian bond yield, for, for, for example, is to compare it to the German, um, the German bond yields. So G Germany is sort of the, you know, not so much the risk-free rate anymore, but it's the lowest yield that you have in, in the EU. Um, the current spread between what the Germans are paying on their 10-year 10 10 year bonds and what the Italians are paying is now over, well, around about 450 basis points. Wow. So that's a significant spread, a significant difference between what the Germans have to pay for their debt and what the Italians have to pay for their debt. 
and the Italians currently are running a, a deficit of 120% of GDP with uh, a total uh, value of about US $2.1 trillion. So Greece was, uh, you know, 100, 200 uh, billion euros. Italy, 1.78 trillion euros. Mm -hmm. And that spread to German bonds has blown out to a level that triggered the bailouts of Portugal, Ireland and Greece. Exactly. And this exactly. is the problem. Europe's going, actually, Italy's too big to mm. bail out. What happens now? That's right, and that is, um, I mean, that is the, the the biggest risk I think in the in the European, with the European sovereign debt crisis at the moment. Italy is a significant economy, as you said, with 1.8 trillion euros in sovereign debt. Um, there is just not enough money to bail them out, and you've got their parliament and government also going through a lot of tensions and issues at the moment. Um, Berlusconi, obviously. Um, not a lot of confidence for, for him uh, as a leader uh, amongst most of the, uh, the EU and around the world and um, they've got their own austerity measures that they're supposed to be passing but from what we hear uh, there's still a lot, of, uh, a lot of tensions within their government to get these through the system. So, And this is all forcing the European Central Bank to cut interest rates perhaps a bit sooner than some people were expecting. Yeah, they did. So they, cut, they, they surprised overnight the European Central Bank cut interest rates from 1.5 to 1.25%. Uh, it was the first policy meeting for the new ECB president, um, Draghi, who's taken over from Trichet. And an Italian. <laughs> and an Italian, yeah, quite quite interesting. Um, he's an extremely uh, well-educated and experienced uh, practitioner, um, and he's taken over from, from Trichet. So he's cut interest rates from 20, by, by 25 basis points, but really fell short uh, in terms of um, further support by the ECB of buying these you know, sovereign bonds. So... The US and, 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 and other economies have been trying to get the ECB to participate more in, in buying sovereign bonds off these struggling uh, peripheral economies. Yet the Germans don't want the ECB, their precious Bundesbank, no, to don't. go out there buying all this uh, stuff that could turn toxic later on. Well, absolutely. And, you know, they're already holding a pretty big, uh, big, big, big portion of um, Greek bonds. Um, and their balance sheet, uh, you know, if you really wanted to, to look into it, I'm sure they're, they're looking, you know, pretty pretty average at the moment. Now, just coming back to this side of the world, interest rate cut in Australia as well mm. on Melbourne Cup Day. Yeah, so the RBA delivered an interest rate cut on Melbourne Cup uh, Day um, by, by 25 basis points from 4.75 to 4.5. Um, really, you know, looking at the inflation outlook, they've, they've reduced their uh, inflation, medium-term inflation outlook. And uh, today also in the Reserve Bank uh, minutes, they have, um, have, have dropped their, their forecast for the Australian economy for, 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 for economic growth. So overall, a softer outlook for the Australian economy, and they're moving to a more neutral setting for their interest rates. Whether a neutral setting means that we've got more interest rate cuts on the cards, um, certainly if we see further weakness in the Aussie economy, you would imagine they'd be uh, inclined to cut rates further. In New Zealand, we had slightly worse than expected uh, un unemployment figures. And we saw the New Zealand dollar move a little bit against the Australian dollar and quite a lot against some of the other currencies. Mm. Give, a, give us an idea of the ranges for the New Zealand dollar versus those currencies over the last week or so and, and where we might look at for the next week or so. Yeah, well, the Kiwi dollar has been underperforming relative to most of the major currencies over the last week or so. Um, against the US dollar, we made a one-month low of around 78 cents, and that was mostly driven by risk aversion, but also the weaker uh, employment uh, number on, on Thursday. Against the Aussie dollar, we're sitting around three-month lows. We're trading around lows of 76 cents this week, sitting around sort of 76.30 or so today. The range there, we've been, uh, we haven't uh, managed to get up over 77.50 over the last couple of weeks, so the range for the Kiwi against the Aussie, 76 up to 77.5. Uh, also, just strangely enough, we're, we're underperf underperformed even relative to the euro, trading around the low, <laughs> the low 57s, which is, is quite counterintuitive when you think about it. But um, I suppose this whole risk-off theme generally undermines our currency more, um, and we're trading around the low 57s, currently around 57.5. Resistance is seen around 58.50. Against the pound, we're sitting around 49.5. We, we traded around support at 0.49 this week, held that support zone and look like we're probably going to trade between 49 and 50 and a half for the time being. And another piece of news that sort of blasted past without too much notice, but important, the Bank of Japan intervened to, yes. try, to try and uh, bring its yen down, mm. which, um, did it work? Well, it has for the time being, although people do question uh, how, how, how long this will last. 
the um, so the Bank of Japan basically uh, intervened in the currency market, selling billions and billions of, of, of Japanese yen, buying US dollars, uh, and buying other currencies. In fact, the New Zealand dollar actually you know strengthened against the uh, against the Japanese yen on the back of that. Um, the thing about Japan is that you know they they rely heavily on their export sector, and with the Japanese yen trading at all time highs against the US dollar, it's not doing them any favours. And and as we know, their um, their economy continues to, to perform quite quite poorly, although they are still considered a safe haven uh, safe haven currency and asset in times of turmoil. So looking ahead for the next week, we've got the G20 summit on as we speak. Mm-hmm. We've got. U.S. non-farm payrolls figures uh, on Friday night. Um, what, what should people watch out for over the next couple of weeks? Well, I think the U.S. employment data tonight with the non-farm payrolls number is always a big one, um, and certainly gauging the strength of the U.S. economy uh, is quite key in these times. We had the FOMC statement actually out this week as well. The U.S. Central Bank announced interest rates didn't change their policy settings, but they did have one of the one of their uh, voting members dissented and actually wanted to add further stimulus to their economy. Now, the, the chairman there, Ben Bernanke, came out in his press conference and basically said that uh, uh, um, the economy, their economy had picked up steam in the third quarter, although overall there cont- continues to be significant risks to the outlook. So, um, you know, they've left the door open to further policy uh, response, which would be, a, you know, perhaps another round of, of quantitative easing. But I think the market is waiting to see how this Operation Twist scenario plays out, uh, which they announced a couple of months ago. So I think we'll see... See them probably stay uh, stay steady for the next couple of months, but the potential for another round of quantitative easing could could really change the whole dynamic of what's happening in the currency and equity markets again. But you know, certainly short term, I think uh, the the issues in Europe aren't going to go away anytime soon. So you'd imagine that you know that that dark cloud's going to hang over everyone for for the time being, and any headlines really related to Europe will be the focus. We don't have a lot of local data out next week. We've got a bit of bit of data out of China. Uh, on on Wednesday and employment figures out of Australia on Thursday. Meanwhile, we'll all become Greek political experts. I think that's what we'll have to do. Dan Bell there, never a dull moment. There'll be plenty more non-dull moments, I think, over the next couple of weeks. I'm Bernard Hickey from interest.co.nz. That was Dan Bell from HighFX.